Hello, I'm Dr. Sherilyn Williams Stroud, and today I want to talk to you about why you want to monitor your hydraulic fracture stimulation treatments. There are a number of reasons why you want to do this. One is that you want to know the fracturing direction. It's not always as you expect, so if you monitor it and locate the microseismicity, you can tell where, what the direction is and you can plan future wells. Another was you want to identify the extent of fracturing. You want to know how big was the uh, volume of rock that you actually broke during the stimulation treatment. You want to avoid faults and other kinds of hazards. Some, if pumping into faults might cause you to uh, waste materials that you use to stimulate the well. The other one might negatively impact uh, production. You want to understand how the rock broke. Uh, and because when we monitor from the surface, we can identify the source mechanisms from the microseismic events. We can tell you how the rock broke, which also helps you plan for future stimulation treatments. And also, in that light, planning for future stimulations is very important. So once you put all those other things together, you can know where to place the next well and how to stimulate that next well. Okay, here's an example monitoring result where you can see the frac extent. This is a north-south well bore. You can see the red line is the well bore. These, uh, mic the spheres represent the locations of the microseismic events. They're all colored by stage because we break the well off into separate um, sections as, and you stimulate small sections at a time and each of those sections is colored a different color. Um, what you can see in this exa example is that the stimulation treatment extent is about 1500 feet off to the east of the well bore. In this example, it shows a fault reactivation. All of the red events are showing the, sort of the stimulation result that we like to see. The, the, the uh, events there are all distributed. They're, they're densely distributed near the well bore, but they also have an, a, an extent of the well bore that's reasonable. But then when you go to the blue events, you see this big long string of events that go out a lot further, but they're also thinner. They're, they're not as densely populated as the red events. And that indicates to, to us that we've actually fracked into a fault. And so I put those lines on there to show you that those, those are two areas where there was uh, micro seismicity, all the energy of the stimulation treatment actually went into the fault zones rather than breaking up the rock. This is an unexpected result from microseismic monitoring. Here we have um, a well bore that was drilled, the horizontal was drilled in a direction that they thought would cause the events to the uh, microseismicity to form perpendicular to the well bore. But in this case it actually forms at a, a smaller angle to the well bore so you don't get as much of the rock broken as you expected. So once you know that the next well you would drill in a different direction. In this case, we're looking at a well in the Barnett. It's a cartoon, and so what you see here is that the, the Barnett shale is much thinner than it's represented in this picture, and it's many thousands of feet deep. And the thing that you want to avoid in this case is the water that's below the Barnett shale. And because if you pump into that water, then the water will come into the well, you won't be able to, to produce the gas or oil. Understanding how the rock broke is also uh, very important for planning your future wells. In this case, what we see is um, the, micro, the well bore again is north-south. You see um, that the microseismic, the microseismic events form trends that are northwest-southeast, which wasn't the expected result. Again, they expected the microseismic event trends to be east-west. And you, what we did, we went from our microseismic data from the surface, we inverted them from the, uh, for their source mechanisms, and we found out that in this case, all of these events were the for failing and strike slip. So that also helps plan for future wells. You know how to orient your well bore, and you also know something about the stress state in the reservoir. So planning for future well placement means that you can look at the events. When you monitor the events from the surface, you can tell the extent in, um, uh, from to either side of the well for how far out the microseismicity happened. In other words, how far, how much of the rock you broke. And then you can look at that and decide where to place the next well. For instance, in this case, maybe you could place your next well parallel to that, next to that. And in this case, maybe even change your stimulation plan so that you could get more of the rock breaking. Thank you very much.